Well, believe it or not, the front is done. Um, and actually, the interior of the house is almost done, practically done. And I'm going to show you both of those, I think, on Sunday, in the Sunday show. So that leads to my question of the day. Which are you more curious about, to see the front yard completed or to see the interior completed? That's my question of the day. So, Stuart, come around this way, because um, this, while the front is finished, the side yard and the back is still kind of a work in process. We have made some progress, but nevertheless, um, on this walkabout, you're mostly going to see things that have yet to be done. Let's not sh reveal the whole front, but I do want to show this corner here, which has some lemon lime nandina, and it's got some encore azaleas here. This is, I think these are the pink ones, carnation. They've got new growth on them, and I cannot wait for them to bloom, rebloom this fall in Oakland Holly. And then, Stuart, this is kind of funny. Some people grow their own vegetables. This year, I'm growing my own Christmas tree. So you re may remember that these blue spruces I brought, and I shopped my own garden at the other house, and I'm going to plant these in bigger pots and see if I can get them to really put on some size so that I can bring them in for not just maybe kind of small Christmas trees, but medium-sized Christmas trees. Um, so around here, this is what we're doing now. We're going to put in a heavy piece of metal right in here, and then we're going to raise the soil so that it is flush, flush with the existing grade, and then we're gonna place the flagstone and we're gonna mulch all of this. I am loving the way this is looking. So you may recall that in front of the Leland Cypress, we put some um, moon, rot, moon, moon dance, moon dance hydrangeas. They're just now starting to come out in front of some white, gorgeous moonlight encores. Moonlight, I believe, is the name. It's moon something because this is my moon garden. And then Javier, say hello. Oh, right me. Yes, our followers have missed you. Say hello. Hi. So Javier um, will be working a little bit later. Um, and I, if I sound out of breath, it's because <laughs> I've been <laughs> heaving flagstone here and kind of yeah. placing it so that we can get the right cadence along here. But we won't be actually doing this till, I don't know, tomorrow or a yeah, couple, okay. couple days from now. So we're gonna be working on this. So Stuart, follow me, follow me. I've got some more hydrangeas, some of those wonderful terra hydrangeas from Southern Living. Those, ooh, they're a little droopy. They need to get in the ground. I'm going to do a little throw rug of brick in here. At certain points, we will be adding a little bit more sod, Stuart, so that uh, it doesn't look so patchy and it will look tidy. We'll finish it up through here. I am loving the way these Oakland Hollies look in these pots. They've put on a lot of new growth. And that I think they're gonna really like this position because it's gonna get afternoon shade. I need to clean out the last of the ashes from the last fire, put a little bit more mulch on top, and then come back here, Stuart. And this probably looks just as messy. I'm, em it. I'm embarrassed. Just as messy as it did last time, with the exception that there are far fewer plants back here because a lot of them have finally, finally been moved and planted in the front yard. And I think, and I think that's, that's great. And you guys have just so enthusiastically participated in everything that goes on. And I wanna give a big shout out because I, I, there's just too many to, to note individually. And I'm always afraid I will leave some out. So that's why I don't call you out by name. But I have gotten so many notes and messages and housewarming presents. I got, I, I got one from Germany the other day with the sweetest note. And my heart just 
I, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So I, I, I do read them. I just can't mention every one. Um, okay, so this is a mess back here. And you might say, okay, Linda, it looks just as much of a mess as it did last time. Why haven't you done anything? Well, it's because wherever I would move them, it's just gonna be temporary and nobody is coming back here anyway. So I don't wanna, I guess, throw good labor after bad if I'm gonna have to redo it. But we are getting ready to tackle some of the hardscaping in the back and laying the bed lines. And then probably I will put in the remaining plants that have to be installed that came out of the greenhouse, but I won't be buying any new plant material for this season. What I have put in is what I feel comfortable putting in now before the heat, and then the rest is just going to have to wait until fall. And that will be exciting because by then, by the way, everybody's allergies have just been terrible, haven't they, Stuart? Um, by then, we'll be getting the casement windows for the great room in October. The bed lines will be established in here, out here. It will all look nice and tidy. And by then, we will be ready to use this as an outdoor living room with a little fire pit area. Hopefully by then I will have made a decision on putting a small greenhouse in there. But that's for the future. Right now, it is just a mess. So. Here's what we're gonna be working on this week, or I should say next week. So Kayla and I, and by the way, you guys give a shout out to Kayla because she's having some real shoulder issues after hurting it last week or week before last. So that's kind of slowed us down a little bit, but uh, send some good thoughts her way. But we're gonna be laying out the new steps here, something similar to what I had at the other house and on Sunday, we'll try to put up some pictures of that. Stuart, look, can you look? Oh my gosh, I've had so many swallowtails. It is so much fun. So, so I'm just gonna be rearranging this, but what's my design plan? In case, and it, by the way, in case you didn't watch the previous one that I talked about here, and you're really gonna have to tell me if you can see my vision. Um, you're going to have to really put your Google glasses on <laughs> to see it to the future. Um, so if you didn't watch the previous video or if you're new to this channel and if you are, here's my spiel, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, make sure to share and send a link to others that you think might enjoy. Um, but th th this is kind of what we're thinking about. Imagine if you will, and again, this probably will change, just like I changed a bunch of stuff in the front based on how the season progresses, what the temperatures are, um, how the light changes. But right now, what I am seeing is, imagine if you will, a great big oval, almost an egg shape, but a great big oval of an egg that will kind of sit on its side. And the inside of the egg profile will be what I will consider to be the dining area or the carpet area. Everything outside that oval egg, along between the outside of the oval egg and the fence, that is always that is going to be flower beds. I'm gonna probably put some raised beds back in here. The grass will be removed. And by the way, in case, um, in case you don't remember, none of this lattice work was here when we moved in. This is one of the very first things we did to ensure that we had more privacy back here. So this was just simple trellising that Kayla's guys framed out put on top of the existing fence, and then we matched the stain to it. So any kind of, of wooden ornaments, wooden features or whatever that we have back here, it will be stained in the same color, so it will be harmonious all around. So Stuart, if you don't mind torquing a little bit, at this point you can see that it's the same color as my back door and all of my trim work. 
So stay there for just a moment, Stuart, because after I get the steps done, I'll probably put in some kind of awning here so we can stand out in this area when it's raining. There'll be new stepping stones that go to the garage. And then if you'll look over here where the air conditioner is with another plant that needs to be watered, where the air conditioner is, I'm going to be doing a similar lattice work surround, stained to match everything else over here to hide all of this ugliness. We're going to make some kind of platform, probably a brick throw rug or something, for the grill, which at, right now I'm not exactly sure about its placement. It might go stay right here. I don't know. Um, that probably that concrete surround will go away. I'm not sure unless it's doing something for to contain the water. But this will become a big flower bed over here with stepping stones that go to the garage. I will probably have an awning put over this. Again, this is all just thinking about the future. This will be flower bed here. So everywhere except <clears throat> the egg, the grass will be removed and there will be plantings or something along the edge. I'm thinking, give me your opinion on this, you guys. I'm thinking about constructing some kind of plant support here, rose support, and growing a climbing rose up this. So let me know your thoughts on that. And if so, what color you guys would recommend. This is a crepe myrtle that was here when we bought the house and it will probably be removed or relocated. This is, even though it looks dead, it is not. This is my being a negligent and irresponsible mother. Show the green. Okay, show, but show the green. So this, always be patient to see if something is really sincerely dead or if it is just kind of going into shock. And this went into shock. I had it in the winter time in my office. I think in all of the busyness, I failed to water it enough. But this can really handle low water conditions. So when I brought it out here after it turned brown, I, it started getting regular watering. And by the way, these bay leaves still smell incredible. But I think Stuart showed you there is all sorts of new growth starting at the base. And I will just let it work its way up. I will remove this dead, these dead leaves, the dead foliage, and see how far up that new greenery travels and, and then work with it accordingly. So over in here, obviously we're going to have to get rid of the grass around the perimeter and we will be doing that Im immediately starting maybe next week. Once I remove that, then I will put these, my, my plant stands in place and I will tidy up all of my terracotta and have it looking at least presentable um, and in storage, attractive terracotta storage because I think terracotta is just inherently beautiful and I'll do that um, until I'm ready to do any kind of planting in the fall and I will place all of the different furnishings. I really like having the table in the center. So you may ask, so you're going to have grass under your table. And right now, I am thinking that I'm going to try it because I've got a great stand of Bermuda back here. I know you guys hate it, uh, but it is tough for Oklahoma. And so if I keep it nicely edged and stay on top of it, Bermuda is kind of like Virginia creeper. You have to stay on top of it. But when it looks good, it looks great. Am I right, Stuart? It's been horrible to me. <laughs> yeah, and I know some of you are saying, well, why not try fescue or why not try zoysia? Why not try something else? 
because this works in Oklahoma. That's it, what works for you. Is yes, it. and it works pretty much year round in brutal conditions, whereas fescue can be very finicky, is very high maintenance, requires lots of water, and, and zoysia is also tough, but you can't overseed it so that it is green in the spring and in the fall. You can't overseed it with something like a perennial rye, a thin blade perennial rye. So does that mean that yes, before I mow, I will have to move the furniture? Yes, <laughs> but this yard is so small, it won't take that much time. And I do a lot heftier lifting than that, don't I, Stuart, do. on a weekly basis. So this is one of those kinds of things that um, whether I mow or I have someone else mow, it'll just be once a week, just kind of moving it out of the way so that they can they can mow and move it back. So that's my thinking on that. Might I change my mind? Might it be a terrible idea? <laughs> Absolutely. But my default is always to use what I have first. And so and what is least labor intensive. So I'm going to go I'm going to go with that philosophy. So then over here some work I'll be probably doing this weekend. I'm so excited. Huge shout out to my baby brother David and his wife Tracy who are going to be arriving today from Overland Park, Kansas. A shout out to all you Kansans and also to my son Jamer and his and my new daughter-in-law, not new anymore I guess, <laughs> Taylor. They're going to be coming for Mother's Day weekend so I'm so excited. Our, our first overnight guests. Um, so as you can see there's still some plants primarily hydrangeas to get in the ground. A lot of you have asked what I, what I did with the Encore Azaleas, that I, the topiary ones, and I have just, they have just been over here kind of getting established in these pots because I just don't have a lot of time to tend stuff back here because I've been working so much inside and in the front, but Nevertheless, they're going to look great in there. They will get to be in a position of prominence, I assure you. This is another Eugenia that suffered but is not dead. It will be repotted. It has lots of new growth coming out on it. And all of these angel wing begonias, I'm going to put them in probably one massive container. I'll be doing that myself this weekend. Um, I'm going to get these other things in the ground. This poor Silverado Sage, it needs watering, but other than that, it's pretty happy. So I think I'm gonna try something different with this. You guys give me your opinion. I think I'm going to plant it. I'm gonna do something similar to what I did with the Eugenia topiaries in the front. And I think I'm gonna plant it in a great big plastic pot. Maybe that one over there. And then I'm gonna sink this into the ground so that it looks like it's in the ground because I'm gonna to have to take it out again in the fall to put it back in the greenhouse because it's not reliably frost hardy. But then I am, I am going to keep its tree shape, but I am not going to topiary it into a ball. What I'm going to do is straighten it up to fly right. I'm gonna thin it out and I'm gonna let it grow into a pretty tree form and see how, how long I can make the branches go. I think it'll be pretty as a little tree. Anyhow, it's an experiment. And you guys know how I love a good, good experiment. So basically all this area that is just a mess, it is going to be addressed. Um, these plants will get some TLC. They've been holding their own, but, but all of them, like even this little Miss Figgy, it's got new growth coming out on it. So they just need some TLC and I will give it to them. Now that the front, have I said that the front is just about finished? I, I just can't wait. Um, in fact, we're planning a wine tasting party with a new neighbor of mine on the social patio here before too long. And oh, and one other thing, Stuart and I, we, we do hear you, I promise, we do hear you about the whole outfit of the day thing. And we're trying to, we've been musing back and forth. Um, 
partly because you guys seem to be very interested in a lot of, of items and sourcing them, uh, but also a way that will make it easier to provide that information without to the people who want to, to see the it. people yeah. who want to see it and and so what we're thinking is maybe we will just consolidate them all and start putting them on just one day of the week that way those of you that have no interest in it you don't have to watch I won't make you suffer through it so right now we're thinking um, I don't know maybe on Monday or something and we will put a disclaimer at the top if this is not gardening content <laughs> it is only outfit of the day content so so that those who don't want to suffer through it, you, you, you don't have to, I promise. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about topiary because I haven't been talking about it much and it is one of my signature touches. So I, I brought out some of my myrtles. They too suffered in the move, understandably, but they are coming back. Um, I can't wait to clean off my table, get this all looking good and ready to receive guests. but. What's fun for me and kind of my psychology about waiting till fall is then when it's really, really hot, I'm only stressing about the front. I don't have to stress about uh, the back as well. And I've got some speaking engagements coming up. Um, I've got some, a little bit of traveling that I wanna do. I've got some new projects to work on. And this way I can just I can just know that the infrastructure is in place, ready for me to rock and roll in the fall, and it will give me something really to look forward to. The other thing is, I am so, so fortunate. I, believe me, it does not escape me how fortunate I am to be in this new cottage with a brand new landscape out front with these brilliant craftsmen and plantsmen to help me do all of this. And I don't, I want to savor it. And I think sometimes there can be an embarrassment of riches. Do, would you agree with that, Stuart? Where you just, you feel like you, oh, I'm so fortunate. I can't really appreciate it all at once. And I really want to embrace how grateful I am for it so that I can just enjoy that and think about this a little bit later and have something to look forward to because I am under no delusions that it is not going to be as hot as the Dickens this summer. Are you, Stuart? Not at all. Not at all. But in this moment, even though it was really hot last week, we have some rain in the forecast and so a few cooler temperatures in the forecast. I'm loving that, and so so that's that's all good. Stuart, was there anything else? Oh, our next live. Oh, yeah, okay. Our next live is going to be on May 21st at 2 o'clock, Be There or Be Square. We're going to be giving away some high C boots, some more Cool Job gloves. Man, have I been going through the Cool Jobs gloves. I have to have them on constant rotation to, to keep them washed. Um, and oh, the third thing was if you guys want some Mother's Day gifts ideas, I there, I and I'm so sorry, I have to apologize. Those wonderful conical shaped topiary boxwood apparently they only ship, it has not, it, it's not a southern living plant, I have no control over it, and they only ship to certain places. But if you're one of the places they ship to, you want to get some of those because I was out shopping yesterday and I saw that very same plant for $88 at a nursery. So it's a great, great deal to take advantage of. And then some other really fun recommendations that I have for Mother's Day, including, and I'm sorry for these, the self-promotion, but uh, I did put in the effort. So please pre-order my garden journal if you haven't already done so, it will come out in December. And if you physically want something to hand somebody to wrap for Mother's Day, if they haven't already received the Elegant and Edible Garden, you might give that as a gift with a gift certificate or something that the Garden Journal is gonna be coming. And I'm gonna be talking more about the Garden Journal and some of the things that the categories and the type of information that you can document in it a little bit later on. You can get all of those at amazon.com or you can also uh, eventually find them at your local bookstore or shop local first. Okay, take a breath, Linda. Can you tell I'm excited that I have guests coming? Uh, is there anything else we need to discuss? T-shirts, 
all links, Mother's Day recommendations, everything is in the description below. Uh, you guys just have a beautiful day and hopefully you will enjoy your evening as much as I plan to enjoy mine. Thank you for hanging out with the two of us on this Wednesday Walkabout. Take care.